Hi and welcome to Matrix Moments. This is Saloni and you've tuned into part 3 of our gaming content series. On this episode, we talk about the rise of Web3 and how we expect it to transform the gaming industry. Joining us for this conversation are Manish Agarwal, the CEO of Nazara Technologies, Anirudh Pandita, the founder of Loco, Thomas Patel, co-founder and CEO of Omelette, as well as Tarun Davra, Ayush Chamaria and Rahul Chug from the Matrix team. Tune in. Yeah, got it. Great. Thank you so much. Maybe quickly we can touch upon another topic which is there in everyone's mind, that is Web3 and how Web3 really affects the e-streaming and e-sports space. Manish, would love to get your views first, given you, you know, have been a very big proponent of the space. How do you see Web3 really transforming the esports? And the By the way, I came back, I came, I, I met Manish, uh, Manish, this was what, two, three weeks ago. And, and I, I literally felt like a dinosaur because he, he said <laughs> things that I had never heard about. And I quickly came back and I said, please send me links on all the stuff you were mentioning. So Manish, you know, would love to uh, sort of get uh, some insight. And, you know, again, a lot of these things are, you know, right now it's, we all recognize it's very early. But, I think, uh, uh, and there's a lot of buzz, right? So, so would love for you to just break it down and, you know, what opportunities do you really see there? So, Tarun, if you look at uh, Ayush Tarun, we have heard a platform guy speaking right now. We have heard a dev tool guy speaking right now. The value is being captured by Anirudh in Loco. The creators are getting whatever money they are getting. Uh, dev tool omelette is created a lot of people might have contributed as community in bug fixing things whatever it is but the value is being captured in form of equity by omelette right i think what fascinates me is the process of disrupting it uh, the process of disrupting the uh, value creation is happening by the community and the sharing of wealth should happen between the community and not just one who's aggregating it and i think that's the promise of web3 which uh, if executed with the right teams and right uh, intent is what I'm very, very fascinated about. And which is where uh, creating a streaming platform, uh, which kind of really has co-ownership with the creators, with the viewers, and everybody is kind of really getting a common alignment. It's like what we mm -hmm. say when uh, if all of us are Nazara shareholders and all of us will think of one line is that how the how this share price is moving and we are all swimming or sinking together. Similarly, if, if there is a combined ownership of viewers, creators, developers onto that platform, then everybody is kind of really benefiting or not benefiting and then the channelization is happening. And I believe that's a disruption which is going to happen in the esports streaming platform. It's a, in the in the tech of it, in the viewership of it, in the uh, front end of it, content creation of it, all aspects. Uh, uh, because it's a long tail business, fundamentally. Um, and that is where when the long tail business is, uh, like whether I'm sitting in Karnal or Kunur, if I can create my fandom, I should really kind of, and, and such more heroes will emerge. Um, that because that's the that's the nature that's that's the nature of this business uh, you can't really control those uh, those mini heroes or hyper local heroes to emerge and if you can really kind of get them on a platform where they are also getting economic interest that's what is going to happen i will not use the jargons of metaverse or i will not use the jargons of nfts but that's the fundamental thesis which a blockchain can transparently solve excites me and uh, i think I'm sure Ani and team have put in the most capable 10 blockchain guys with the right tokenomics experts working on how to resolve this. I'm sure TJ is thinking, how do I really kind of adapt to this new developer ecosystem, which is coming and co-creating the next uh, version omelet can really solve all the problems on mobile, which we spoke about. Because I truly believe uh, if, if PC and Twitch can solve some of those things, why can't mobile can solve? And I've been Right, really working on some of the things in, in, in a time. So that's what my thesis is. Uh, not just get carried away by crypto exchange tokens, uh, speculation. The value extraction from what we can deliver from first principles is amazingly possible here. Yeah. EJ would love to get your thoughts. I think some parts of it are already there on your platform. And you have... Yeah. yeah. Please. Sure. 
So, I mean, uh, you know, we just actually uh, have been really embracing the blockchain market because I think that like from a fundamental level, like blockchain is about opening up the borders of your economy to the borders of other economies. So, you know, I think the very first stuff you see people do, you know, everything is in the blockchain, you know, and so the applications are really simple. They're not that interesting uh, and you can speculate on them. But as the games get more interesting, you know, it's more like your wallet, your collectibles that are in there, and those can migrate elsewhere. They can be used outside of the world or one from outside events and things like that. Uh, and so what we see is that, you know, as games open themselves up to this, they have an opportunity to really incentivize their influencer community to do much more for them and at much bigger scale because they can get people signed up to uh, be able to offer you know the kind of giveaways that people like to do to grow where it's you know in-game resources things that can grow in value over time uh, that are tied to the platform itself and they actually can be exposed in a way where uh, it's uh, open so that, you know, the content creator earns these for how much viewers they have, and then they can distribute them through their own mini games or discords or custom kind of channels that really let them build the support within their own community base. And so I think that that's not, that's not happening like right now, like you're not going to go out and see that, you know, we do have some blockchain stuff, but that's not what's in there right now. Uh, but that's the promise. And I, I think that um, it's something where it's a big problem today. Like if you want to launch a game, you're going to go sign up and pay a bunch of people a lot of money up front with contracts. And you're going to, you know, eight out of 10 were crap. It didn't work out. But two of them were just awesome. And they really launched your game. So now you can, you can think about how do we do it with 100 people where it doesn't cost us anything really. But if we go big, then all of them, you know, win big. And so that's, that's what we're excited about and why we think we have to be like in that space. So we have gone and like built a blockchain into our fundamental account system. So uh, we have a wallet and uh, right now it's we have Polygon based, but we're going to support all the other gaming centric chains. And we started to go down the angle of looking at uh, how do we help creators monetize? So we let them issue NFTs to their fans so that they can sort of build a community uh, stronger, you know, amongst themselves. And I think there's lots of ways that NFT ownership can translate into community engagement with DAOs and things like that. So, you know, there's so many opportunities here, but, you know, basically uh, it's really early on mobile, like super early, like blockchain on mobile is very early. So that core plumbing infrastructure needs to be there. And that's what we're kind of laying out the groundwork for so that we can help connect the influencer economy to global games. Uh, sorry, just yeah. to comment here. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead, uh, Muni. Rahul, your earlier question on dev tools, this, what TJ just described is the white space opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I wanted to just, uh, you know, from our side, like we are, also very, very bullish on Web3 and from a fan perspective, actually, more than anything else, which is like I always joke about this, that I'm wearing a Liverpool cap. If Liverpool dies tomorrow, I still have the cap. So, um, you know, and and we all know being in the, all of us are early stage people, like things are not perfect day one. So, you know, the criticism that I'm seeing for most of the stuff is for something that should be just a perfect product. And, uh, you know, we've obviously seen a bloody week, two weeks in, in crypto, but, um, you know, leave aside cryptocurrencies for a second because that's a separate podcast and I'm happy to join that. Uh, but, uh, you know, public, uh, you know, the fact that you can validate through a public ledger uh, your ownership or something, I think that's that's a fundamental game changer for economies where gamers actually like having virtual goods, right? So they there is a very, very simple way of knowing that, okay, like, let's say if, I sign with, I'm a big streamer, I sign with a publisher, they're going to make a skin on my name. How do I know they're actually giving me the right? I have no way of auditing, zero ways of auditing, right? Like this is just a fundamental uh, thing that, uh, you know, that is there. Whereas, uh, you know, if you wanted to add a new way of showing support to your 
uh, favorite creator from a fan point of view, right? That is something you can do today, whether you can do it through somewhat of an NFT inside a game, outside a game with uh, merchandise. And look, these people are streamers and viewers both live in the virtual world, right? In a virtual world, how do I even show that I own something, right? And stickers are like people, if you see our chat, send lots of stickers. But what if you had that big sticker that only the top fan has, for example, right? And how do I know you are the right person who has it? So there is these sort of interesting use cases that, that are going to come up, which is, you know, from a, view, a viewer's point of view, you can feel much closer to the streamer. You can show your support. Um, if you are someone who wants to be an esports scout, for example, right? If, like, you know, you collect uh, collectibles, they go up in value. You can show that to any guy in a job interview today, just like you could if, you know, wanted to be an investor and you'd say, okay, I only invested at, 10,000 rupees, but it's the research is just as good. If it's a, you know, hundred million dollar trade, maybe the trading trading itself might be different, but the thesis might be the same. And today, how do you do that? You find it through small tournaments that are running on Loco, right? The small 5,000, where there are maybe a rupee tournament, maybe where there's 10 people, 20 people watching. You can, those guys with the scouts will start going there and they'll say, okay, I'm going to start buying up something, right? Because maybe I cannot buy uh, and do a contract with this guy today. And if you're a gamer, it just created a, or a streamer, it created a completely new um, revenue opportunity for you, which you never had before. You would have to go to, you know, a publisher, say, hey, man, do you want to do a partnership? And we know how B2B partnerships work. They take forever. And by that time, this guy's career is probably over. So I think you will see a very interesting new uh, form of um, kind of fan support that's going to show up, new jobs that are going to show up. And... I think the play to earn is a very bad term personally, I feel, because it makes it sound like a job, right? If I don't have the play element, if I'm not enjoying the game, then I'm just earning, and it's just like job, right? And which, you know, and I, I'm using it in a negative way, right? Uh, the but Anil, that's a great point you make. You know, one of the things, and I think to your earlier point, one of the criticisms that uh, is going around today is in this whole sort of play to earn, <clears throat> play and earn, whatever, the word play has been fought. A lot, a lot of this is just, you know, it, 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 you know, the reason why, you know, some of the, uh, like you see Dream 11, you see any of these, you know, sort of large gaming, these are, these are fun games where people enjoy spending time. There's an entertainment element to it. Yes, there are ways to make money. But if it's just money and the entertainment is removed, none of these will sustain. Correct. And I think you'll see with, and, and Manish will know these projects better. There are good projects that are coming. And I actually don't think the whole game needs to be on the blockchain, ideally. Like, you can even have partially uh, some t- part of the treasury is um, is NFT, some part is not. And I actually think ultimately when we think of local, like I think of like a prime bundle where I can offer you a subscription across games where you could have, uh, you know, certain goods in these different games and they can be traded, right? There is actually new business models which the, these people have never co- cooperated before. Tarun, uh, Tarun if the... The first phase, the value extraction is coming from exchanges. That's yeah. what I mean. the value exchange, value extraction from goods coming out of time and effort productivity that is not coming in. Mm. So when you have time effort led value extraction, you will have more sustainability in the business models. When you have yeah. value extraction coming from exchanges, it will be short lived like any other project. Uh, so. But the, but the exciting part is, at least the games which came and created, they've created amazing amount of, of if I may say, uh, pro- propensity and proclivity to the firms such as yours to put in money into now right projects. Second, it has also said what not to do. And which is what yeah. Anis, Anis is saying that there's some outstanding projects coming our way uh, as of my understanding is that 500 such projects being developed as we speak, 90% of them will still be driven from speculation, exchange, value creation point of view, but there are 10% which will come in. And I've seen this in 2010, 11, when freemium came uh, from a paid to freemium, this was exactly the same journey. So some of us yeah. who have been around it, we have seen that journey happening and that journey you will, the, 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 the only thing which you should take out silver lining is there is a very strong inherent consumer uh, insight for this to yeah. really work. And if, if you can really go deeper and are able to understand and spot those people, you will succeed in, in mid to long term.
Thanks for tuning in. For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in slash matrixmoments. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for more updates.